And thanks to all of our panelists for being here today. And uh, thank you, Chair Murray and Ranking Member Burr. Um, I just want to say, Dr. Fauci, is there anything more that you would like to say to counteract these um, attacks on your integrity that we've all just witnessed? Well, Senator, thank you. I don't think I have anything further to say. This is a pattern that Senator Paul has been doing now at multiple hearings based on no reality. He keeps talking about gain of function. This has been evaluated multiple times by qualified people to not fall under the gain of function definition. I have not lied before Congress. I have never lied, certainly not before Congress. Case closed. Thank you. So we are 16 months into this pandemic, and I think we're at a critical uh, moment. Two-thirds of adults have received at least one dose of the vaccine, and at the same time, we are seeing cases rising to about 41,000 a day. Um, as Dr. Walensky has said, we have an epidemic here of the unvaccinated. And, but, of course, this continues to affect every single one of us. So it seems to me that our actions and messages in this moment are going to make a huge difference in whether we move forward or backwards, not only here in the United States, uh, but everywhere um, in the world. You know, today, as I was walking into... Uh, this committee hearing, for the first time in months, I saw a line of people waiting outside of a pharmacy uh, for testing and vaccines. Um, and it made me wonder whether the recent surge of the Delta variant is getting people's attention and moving them from indecision to action. What a terrible way for this to happen. Um, but So I have a few questions just to, I hope, clear up some of the misinformation and um, uh, on misunderstandings. Dr. Fauci, the COVID-19 vaccine protects against the Delta variant. Is that correct? It protects against the uh, clinically apparent disease, and it protects extremely well against hospitalization and deaths. Right, right. So if you're not vaccinated, given how contagious the Delta variant is, I mean, it's, would it be fair to say you're almost, you're very likely um, to get the to get this variant to get the COVID nineteen uh, variant, would you say? Well, certainly, when you look at the capability of this virus to transmit from people right. to people, I mean, obviously, you have to be in an environment in which the virus is present. So, if you are in, a, for example, and and I I believe Dr. Walensky mentioned that in her remarks, if you are in a area, be it a state, a city, a county, or what have you where well, you have a high level of infection in the community and a very low level of vaccinated people, the chances in that environment of getting infected are reasonably high. Right, right. And how do you compare, how do you think about the risks, the side effect risks of the COVID-19 vaccine compared to the risks of not being vaccinated? Because this is, I think, what people yeah. are struggling with. Right. It refers to the risk-benefit ratio of getting a vaccination. And every time this has been evaluated, not only with this vaccine, but with so many other vaccines, there is no intervention that is without sometime getting an adverse event. I mean, I don't think I can think of one mm -hmm. that hasn't. Mm -hmm. So when you have that situation, you balance the rarity or the uh, uncommonness of a particular adverse event with the advantage that you would get from protecting yourself against the actual disease against which you're vaccinated. And thus far, whenever this has come up about an adverse event, it's been evaluated, perhaps even a warning has been given, but it's always weighed on the, on the part of saying that the benefit of the protection of the vaccine outweighs the risk of the adverse event. Thank you. Dr. Walensky, you know, I talked with public, I have spoken with a lot of public health experts in Minnesota who tell me that they are still challenged getting, especially younger adults um, who are eligible to be vaccinated, getting them vaccinated. And, and part of it is the challenge, this perception that COVID is just not that big a deal uh, for younger people, people who consider themselves healthy and I've got a strong immune system and so forth. So let me ask you this. Um, are there a larger number of younger people getting hospitalized today versus a year ago or six months ago? 
Um, we have seen uh, hospitalizations go up for every age bracket um, recently as cases go up. Proportionally, because there are more cases now among younger people, we're seeing more of those people in the hospital. They still get hospitalized at a less frequent rate given unvaccinated than elderly patients, but in fact, because there are more of them now, that we are seeing more of them in the hospital. Okay, so another good piece of advice there about Absolutely. being aware of the risk, even if you are, um, even if you see yourself as young and healthy. Absolutely. Thank you, Madam Chair.